Greetings Petro Heads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. Today I'm gonna be presenting you guys the 1986 Athena CS4 for which I've only done one of which I've only done one version so far. Uh, we are using the body that sort of looks like an Alfa Romeo GT and or GT GTV, yeah, GTV, that, that's the one. And uh, applied the new sort of grill uh, setup that we have on the CL5. And as far as chassis goes, we have a steel space frame again, longitudinal placement, the wishbones are around aluminum panels, just like on really all all of Venus in the past couple of years and on the rear we have these uh, rectangular taillights which I think just uh, suit this rear end quite well because they go like around the corner making the whole thing look a little bit sharper and it is of course rear wheel drive so now for the engine. This is a two liter, uh, a three liter, turbocharged, inline six that is loosely based on the. Well, it is it is a Hecate inline six, so it's it is loosely based on the on the rally car engine. Lo I say loosely because this does rev higher than any other iteration um, that we've had of the of this inline six so far, apart from the rally cars of course but then also we're making well 49 cam profile is pretty aggressive for what uh, for what we're used to on Athena's cars and uh, the front response is decent for a turbo car let me tell you that oh I didn't realize that I didn't realize it's still at the race intake no wonder that didn't affect throttle response though. So let's just uh, bring it up to 250 horsepower once again. Two fifty one. Come on now. Uh, it's a little bit too early for my likings. Like this? No? Yeah, okay. 250 horsepower, 400 newton meters. Lots of torque, lots of power, long power band. Um, yeah, we have a five speed manual on this thing. And we have a geared limit that slip diff. That is because the CS is supposed to be a more sporty car because because of its smaller size than our other coupe, coupes. Um, we still have a very drivable suspension setup though. Just to straight, uh, stay true with our tradition, I guess. Um, and this one does not have Android ABS yet either. It does have, still have four seats, handmade interior, luxury, and an advanced safety. And we have hydro pneumatic springs, and I adjusted this so, um, of course, we have the maximum possible drivability. Now, the roll angle is sort of high, but I haven't really found it hurting, hurting this car's performance too much. Uh, yeah, let's just run it on a corner mile. It is quick. A 14.3 second quarter mile time is certainly nothing to just sneeze at. And uh, as far as 
performance on a track goes. Let's see how this does on, on Laguna Seca. One fifty six point ten. That's quite a bit faster than the than the SM four forty T. You you remember the one the original like turbo sports sedan that we made like a few years ago. Um, that had less power, of course, but I mean it's still nice to see some progress and like. Yeah, I, I just think this is a decent, sporty, small GT car, which isn't actually that expensive uh, for what it offers anyway. It Because, as I said, like a, what was it, 14.3 second quarter mile time, it, it, you don't get that on the cheap, is what I'm trying to say. And then also, you, you get a, a handmade interior, you get like a turbocharged in 6 that makes really low emissions for the time um so so it's quote unquote green too even though it's blue um and it is really reliable i don't know if the yeah we still have a little bit i changed that when tuning this engine why did it why did this jump back to plus 10 This isn't supposed to be that high. Then again, I mean... The car isn't overly expensive, I don't think. And this does benefit reliability greatly. We're at 60.9. So I guess I'm just gonna keep the, the quality that that the engine had has. It's sort of safe... Uh, it's, it's sort of uh, weird that the saving doesn't always work, though. Um, yeah, and... I thought about um, making a uh, making a version of this with the Rados V, v uh, Rados V8, the flatline V8, but the five liter also makes 250 horsepower, and I tried; it's actually slower than this uh, because it's heavier. And then also, when I tried to clone the 5 liter 250 horsepower Rados V8 it actually cloned a different engine that uh, that when I tried to delete it it said it, it was used in another car so I couldn't delete it and I uh, and, th and that whole shebang it just was it just was uh, very cumbersome and I didn't actually get to clone the 5 liter uh, version that I wanted to clone and you know I guess it, it wouldn't have been really it wouldn't have it wouldn't have really mattered anyway. I could make a different version out of this turbo in N6 though and make it more powerful. Cuz I think the V V12 doesn't fit. And also it, it is a little bit overkill for this car, I think. The Colossus V8 would fit, but it's uh, I, I think it's also a little bit overkill in this one. I could make a naturally aspirated version of this and make it sort of a lower tier CS4. But why would I want that? I mean, why would anybody who has, let's face it, quite a bit of money to buy this car, why would they settle for something that's slower than what was originally intended? Well, um, let's see, we have more cooling than we need. We do not have any aerodynamic fixtures. We do, the tires are fine. It, there are sports tires as well. Um, I don't think this helps that much. Does this make it accelerate faster? Yeah. By 0.1 second. Mm. 
Yeah, I think this is the better setup by far. Um, this is fine. What do we have? 15 inch rims only. Should we go with ABS? It does buff um, drive drivability considerably. I, st I still think it's just a little bit too early. Could we stiffen up the sway bar a little bit? Yeah, that helped. This is still 1.0 drivability, so it's still good. Why did this lower the prestige? I don't know. Uh, but this should also help with the track time. We had 156.1 before, don't expect any like miracles from that very minor change. But it is now at the 155.8, so that did make a difference. And what else could we do? I think, yeah, let's let's do this actually. Um, we have, we need the luxury expert, of course. Then we need somebody who's good with drive trains, like you. We need you, we need you, and then we need somebody else with good entertainment knowledge, like you. Okay. Uh huh. Ability, more efficient focus than team lead we have uh, we need somebody who's good with turbos then we need somebody who's good with engine heads you for example then we need somebody else with Yep, like that. Then we need a forge expert and a metallurgy expert, because why not? Uh -huh. Then for the car, how many cars do we make per day? I think more than six, to, to be totally honest with you. 25 a day? That's roughly like 800 or so per year. Yeah. Then uh, leave this the same. Just leave this the same. Thirty-two thousand dollars in today's money does well in Super GT and GT Premium, Hyper as well. But they're not that potent because it is only two hundred and fifty horsepower, of course. Um, well, I think overall this would still make a, a decent sporty GT coupe for the, for the eighties. 250 horsepower is certainly not bad for that for that time, especially also considering 5.9 seconds from 0 to 100. That's really good. And then, yeah, handmade interior, all the luxury inside. I think it might do well on that on that market. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.